Well, hello friends, neighbors, John your Whiskey Neighbor here. Welcome to the Nook. It's Sunday, so I'm gonna shoot a couple of samples that I got from uh, Sean, the Dark Cloud. Uh, of course, they're Irish samples, and they're pretty unique. It's, uh, they're both from West Cork, and one of them is um, finished in a cast that was charred with peat, and the other is finished in a cast that was charred with bog oak. So those are some pretty interesting things. I'll give you more details when we come back. I'm going to warm up my palate because I haven't had Irish in a while. So a few thoughts on Turconnell single malt, just their entrance range. If you've got any Irish, Irish single malt or Irish peated, uniquely cast single malt, well, you pour a little dram. And when we come back, we'll know us, we'll talk some whiskey. Three, four. Thanks for staying with me. As I said, some pretty unique casking samples. Now I haven't poured them out because I'm imagining they're going to be a little smoky of some kind and that can really affect how my nose and taste is of the first one. So we'll just talk nose and taste on this. Uh, you know, this is Turconnell single mullet and in my area, uh, it's actually really, really affordable. Now it's a non-age stamp uh, and I believe Turconnell, like this one is is uh, out of Cooley, even though it's owned by Clebagan, I think. Uh, it's released at 43%. So I know there's a version of this that's also, I think, just 40%, but where I'm at, this is very clearly 43%. I imagine it's uh, colored and chill filtered, but what's unique about this release is for Irish, it's double distilled instead of a lot of um, Irish whiskey uh, is triple distilled. It's almost a characteristic, but not totally. Uh, and this is just double distilled, but it's a single malt. So it's just malted barley not a pot still so turconnell single malt nose and taste hmm. nice fresh fruits cut apples sweetness light sugars yeah sweet like like light honey uh, it's it's the kind of nose you might expect from a lighter irish or um a younger single malt uh, scotch I might even say it's a little floral and that it's a, it's a pretty bright nose, slight bit of citrus, but mostly cut orchard fruits. Straight on the palate. Smudge Palate does bring out some malt characteristic, a little bit of cereal nature, little, little, um, crust in a pastry. There's a little youthfulness. So that might come off as white, white pepper or a little bit of bite. Right there, sip. I actually got a little light caramels in that one. So a little, probably from the casking, you know, some vanilla caramels are coming around. Balanced with the orchard fruits, but it is a little, little youthful, a little sprightly. Uh, it definitely has presence. Uh, that could be like white pepper or peppering, but it doesn't feel like a spicy whiskey. It just feels like a little bit of a younger whiskey. It's definitely a, a good value in my market. Doesn't really excite me. Uh, so it sits at a nice dram, three and a half stars, somewhere like that. I know I put a lot of whiskey in that, but what that means is it's good. It's not, there's, there's no knocks for it. I'd buy it. I'm happy to have it, uh, but it's kind of like that. Don't run out and get it. So I've poured out the two samples from Sean, the Dark Cloud, thank you again, Sean. You're always a gentleman sharing the vast expanse of your Irish whiskey collection. These, I'm quite sure, are, uh, well, maybe not, but I think they're natural color. I do believe West Cork is always non-chill filtered. They're also, I think, 43%. I have to say, most of my information on this comes from the whiskey jug. And uh, the whiskey jug seemed to have a back and forth uh, to get a bit more information from the distiller. So this is, what I understand is they started their life two and a half years in X Sherry. And then for six months, this one was aged in an oak cask that was charred over a peat fire. Now whether the oak cask is ex-bourbon or virgin oak, I can't tell. It says virgin oak on these samples, 
but the websites that I saw said it was ex bourbon. And then this bog oak, which is significantly darker, really don't think that's going to show on the camera, but uh, the bog oak is the same, I think, two and a half years ex sherry, and then six months in a cask that was charred, but with bog oak. <laughs> Kind of a cool story. So first, I'll nose and taste the charred over peat from West Cork. It's also a single malt, so it's 100% malted barley. Interesting nose. Definitely some smoke, some oils. Still a sweetness though, like coming from the drama salt, quite sweet. I'm not getting a lot of sherried fruits. A little, you know, general fruit sweetness going on. Yeah, a little more berry. Sour berry, gooseberry. <laughs> so on the nose, a significant influence from that peat chard cask. It, it really does give some of that smoke and that oil and and whatnot nature to it. And then what's coming through is a little citrus, a little berry, a kind of a, a sweetness, but harder for me to tell you exactly what, what sweetness that is. Let's try it on the palate. Sancha. Nice character there. Some of that it really feels, I think I just said this at another whiskey, kind of sooty, smoky, a little ashy, more than earthy peaty, which I thought I might be going to. That smolder turns into sort of a, a relaxed spice palette, like a savory uh, cardamom clove, that type of thing that you'd have in a, in a roast ham. It's not briny, meaty, so I didn't mean to put that in there, but I'm trying to get that the spice palette finish is nice. The finish settles into a little bit of chocolate smoke. Mm. A little sip. Oh, the second sip is quite good. The first was interesting, but the second one I'm getting a, a dark chocolate wafer, like a cracked, a, a cookie that you'd use in a baking or, or something like that. It's not really a cookie, like not that sweet, but it's got some of that kind of heavy cocoa but in the context of, of that crumble, definitely getting some chocolate in there. Uh, that really was nice. Um, took a second to get there right now. Just, I, I just opened them and poured them. So these are just thoughts, but I'm really liking that. And it's really radically different than what I thought I'd warm up my palate, but I had to start with some single malt Irish that I had that was re a reasonable entrance price. And, and that's what I had on the shelf. But this is, uh, for my palate, what I'm going for right now, much, much nicer. Very different. This is all orchard fruits. And this is, you know, there's some sweetness in the dram. There's some sugars going on. Uh, berries more than orchard and a lot of smolder and cookie and a bit of chocolate. Okay, so this one really has me interested. This is the West Cork Bog Oak, the Glen Gareth series, right? I should have said that they're both from the Glen Gareth series, but this is where the last six months it's rested in a cast that was charred over um, oak that was harvested from a local bog, I think. I think so. It's, it's definitely darker. It's probably not coming out, but it's significantly darker. It's 43%. They're both 43%. And I, I know it's uh, unchill filtered. I'm assuming it's natural color. Well, now this one definitely smells like sherry. This one doesn't, you know, maybe given the color, maybe what I read was incorrect or I read it incorrectly. This over peated cask really feels like an ex bourbon all the way. Maybe the last cask was charred virgin, but this is smelling like the same kind of smoke a little bit, but in the context of some stewed red fruit. So, and the color is telling me that too. My nose is telling me that. So again, I could have misread the information, but this really feels like it's it's rested in some X sherry with some smoke, 
with some sour nature. Yeah, whereas this, okay, this has more smoke, less fruit. Hmm, let's try the bog on the palate. Sláinte. I find less ash on the palate. Stronger fruit presence carries from the nose into the palate itself. Leathered, older fruits. There is on the finish, that's where a little more oak, musty, earthy on the finish. Yeah, it's a heavier dram on the finish for sure. Another sip. Title like bog oak. I wondered what am I gonna get? Am I gonna get umami like the bare face with Mitsutake mushrooms? Uh, where is that gonna go? Bog oak, is it gonna be weedy and mossy? It didn't really get there for me. In fact, it feels like a lightly peated, sherried single malt. To my limited experience in pot, that's where I'd go. It's got some nice spicing now coming up, a little thicker Christmas spicing, and it's nice. It's a dram that I would enjoy. I would clearly enjoy a bottle. This is good stuff. The peated one played much more into a little lemon and a little uh, chocolates. What really on the finish for me was was like that, that unsweetened chocolate wafer really came out. Going all the way back to Draconal, it was Orchard Fruits all the way. So I definitely like these two samples from Sean better. They are unique. One felt like a, a nice peated sherry dram and one lightly peated, but some interesting other notes for me. Those chocolates just seem to sing. I don't know which one I like more. They're unique and I would reach for them depending on the mood that I've had. Now, I've said a lot of information that clearly I don't really know. I've just searched online. I've done some web searching. As I said, Whiskey Jug was a lot of my source of information for, for these two releases, but uh, if you have better information, please share. I'm, I'm often wrong, but I like to clarify. I'm sharing what I'm tasting, and that's really the part of the conversation that I enjoy having with you guys. Have you had these? What do you think? Do you like one over the other? Do you get some interesting notes? Why don't you share it down below as well? I love the conversation about what we're tasting together. You guys have a great week. Thank you again for joining me.